Hello, world. I have to be careful with BG3. I got this thing inside me where if I'm not actively creating something, or at least in the process of it, I feel like I'm not really living. And, and I want to live. Oh my. <laughs> this is going to be a fun journey. Baldur's Gate 3 is magic. It puts a spell on me every time I turn it on. I become fully immersed in the role-playing, and I don't just mean the self-insert hero fantasy where I'm the most important character in the world. No, I think it's more. For me, at least. I'm not just playing Tav, I'm role-playing as a creator. Writing, producing, animating, directing, acting. It fills those holes in me tighter than... Careful. You can't just stick your hand in every strange hole you come across. Do not judge me. This is, of course, a fantastic illusion. It took an international team of creators years to pull it off. And yet, as I enter Act 3 of my luxuriously long second playthrough, I can't help but feel like I've sunk more hours into the game playing it than most of the developers <laughs> did making it. Or perhaps a lunatic. Choices matter. Like, really matter. In a way I've never seen before in my 30 plus years of gaming. I'd never played a game like this. I'd never played D&D. &D. So what drew me to this? I think it was the thing I crave most in any game. Nothing quite like Baldur's Gate, is there? Nothing in my recollection anyway. By the mere fact of being alive, we are active participants in the ongoing process of creation. It's 2010. Two experimenters are conducting a test on the attitude of office workers. They set up four offices. The first, called the Lean Office, is minimalistic, almost no decor. The other three are decorated with some fake plants and basic wall art. In Office 3 and 4, folks are given a chance to arrange the decor to their liking. They call this the Empowered Office. The fourth, they call the Disempowered Office. Partway into the experiment, a researcher enters and rearranges all the decor back to its starting position. Which group do you think got the most done? People got 30% more done in the Empowered Office. The point was that the person working in the office had the choice. The very worst was to give them the promise of autonomy and then whisk it away. I reached out to Tim Harford, writer, podcaster, and self-proclaimed D&D fan, to pick his brain about freedom of choice in games. And he had this to say. Games are much more fun when it feels like your choices matter. Sometimes the DM or game designer can fake that and it's okay, as long as the fakery is convincing. But the best way is to actually pay attention to what the players are saying and doing, and what the characters want. I love this idea of convincing fakery. It's magic. Back off, Chop, you're too close. In BG3, I feel like I have full agency, but only because the developers took the effort to compose an outcome for every conceivable choice I can make. For the player, moment to moment, it is magic. For the magician, developer, the DM, it's a well-executed illusion. Successful because they did their homework, like every good wizard should. The first choice you're gonna make is creating a character. In creativity, this jumping off point can be the most intimidating, but it can also be the most exciting. You know in the back of your mind that an entire adventure awaits behind these choices. Choice paralysis creeps at the edge of every decision, every text box, every number. And if you're a complete noob, as was I, you might be tempted to drop the whole endeavor before you've even started. N.K. Jemisin, who the New York Times called the most celebrated sci-fi and fantasy writer of her generation, once wrote this in a blog. You'd be surprised by how often I encounter up-and-coming writers who start fretting about revisions long before they even have a manuscript done. This is revision anxiety. Get rid of it. Take a deep breath, touch some grass, and don't worry about how the raw draft looks. Just get it down first. I call this the zero draft. I love this idea of zero draft. 
Zero Draft could apply to any creative work. It's recording that one line of a song on your phone and humming the rest. It's sketching a sloppy layout for a comic page or a storyboard for a movie. How delightful! And here, it's spending two hours in the character creator on a hairstyle you'll inevitably end up hanging a hat on. Just get it down first. In his book, The Creative Act, A Way of Being, Rick Rubin says, Creativity is not difficult to access. Creativity is a fundamental aspect of being human. It's our birthright. And it's for all of us. I always find it sad when someone who legitimately appreciates the creative work of a talented individual smiles and says, Oh, I could never do that. What is talent? To borrow from this world, I think most people think of talent the way the game describes sorcery. Some are just born with the ability to do magic. Warlocks use magic that was given to them by a patron. Wizards, on the other hand, have to work for it. They master magic only if they put in the hours. Oh, I could never do that. I'm just not wired that way. Why? So maybe you weren't born a sorcerer. Doesn't mean you can't be a wizard. I can find the path to something greater. How on earth could you know if you don't try? There are many situations where people will offer this advice. Be yourself. But I think that's thinking too narrowly. Boring. Have you ever wondered why kids are so doggone good at trying new things? Simple. Imagination. Kids pretend long before getting good. Fake it till you make it applies to literally everything you will ever do. I think kids are open to learning new things, not because their brains are in some pseudo stage of development. It's because kids are less judgmental. They don't mind hearing themselves suck. Everything they do sucks when they first try it. And everything we do sucks when we first try it. But you know what keeps them going? You know why I kept playing guitar? It was because I friggin' loved it. When I was 14 and started playing, I wasn't practicing to impress or to monetize it. I didn't even see it as practice. I just loved doing it. I didn't have to get over caring whether or not I was good at it. It's difficult these days to not compare your creative work to anyone because we have access to basically every creative work in history from cave paintings to your neighbor's Instagram. So you have to do it for yourself first. Then you find that at some point, you'll want to share it. For C.S. Lewis, every story he told started out a simple mental picture. The material for a story would bubble and ferment until it was a thing inside him pawing to get out. It gets in the way of work and sleep and meals. It's like being in love. How can we know what it means to be ourselves until we've played all the roles ourselves are capable of? Life is about rolling the dice sometimes and playing it where it lands. And don't forget, a bad dice roll can actually lead to something amazing. As an outside observer, Dungeons & Dragons always seemed like an intense, dramatic, even dreadful world, made up primarily of pretentious dorks and math. While it certainly can be all of that, that's not what I think it is at its core. As a world of imagination, it's a mecca of creativity. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being silly or serious. I'll accept the flattery either way. The ancient Greeks knew life would be too boring if every creative expression was boiled down to either drama or laughter. Like all great works of art, BG3 contains both light and shade, whispers and shouts, tragedy and comedy. I haven't got the slightest idea what he's trying to say. I was surprised by the sheer number of laughs I had while playing. There were definitely a few occasions where the humor seemed unintentional. But by and large, this game is fun. And shouldn't it be? If that's sarcasm, I can't tell, because everything in this game is silly. 
Um, that Larry and logo tells you a lot. What a perfect parallel. Take life seriously, but not too seriously. I'm not sure I know how to eulogize a giant mushroom. Can we leave? Ah! What is that vile smell? Are you dying? Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. Was that arousal? If what is happening is what I think is happening, and it's because you licked a dead spider, the time might just have come when you and I should split ways. As the lead, you're long and defeated. the damn thing he listens rapt hanging on every word as you near the end of your tale you see his attention drift as he licks his lips thinking about something else entirely i have to be careful with bg3 it fills creative holes in me it satisfies a hunger to invent to craft stories to solve problems in strange ways Yes, and, and it compelled me to make this video. It is now a thing inside him pawing to get out. Again, from Ruben. We have stories about ourselves and about the work, but none of them matter. As artists, we're called to let go of these stories again and again, and blindly put our faith in the curious energy drawing us down the path. And so, here's to the crazy ones. The misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, Careful. the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify, or vilify them, but the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward, and the elf, tiefling, drought, dwarf, orc, halfling, gith, gnome, and dragonborn races forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world, are the ones who do. The yes, yes, yes! Amazing! Perfect! No notes! Stay classy.